Hey guys, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make anything isometric, all in Photoshop. And I say anything, you can do this with anything that is two dimensional, that is flat, which is most things on a screen, but particularly UI design. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Right here, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see an example on screen. This is a piece of art that I created in partnership with Adobe a little while ago now. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with it, um, but one of the main techniques that I used in this is what I'm gonna be showing you today. So I designed the UI in XD, copied that over to Photoshop with uh, transparency, like exported it as a PNG, for example, and then ran this isometric action on these different layers and it made everything isometric and then I could add drop shadows and really layer it up. And of course I've spent a lot of time creating this but the key pillar behind this was making everything isometric when it started out as a two dimensional design. So that's what we're gonna be covering in today. And uh, this is just an example of the kind of thing that you could potentially create. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that there and go over to this pop-up. Here's a UI element that I've got that we're going to be using in a moment. And then we've got the tutorial document. So you can see I've got three layers here, three app screens. And what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna show you how to make something isometric. So if I just click on this layer here, what I can do is go to edit down to free transform. And of course, there's lots of different things that I can now do with this layer, but we're gonna go up to the top here and you can see we have this toolbar with lots of different options. We can adjust the width, the height, the rotation, horizontal and vertical skew. So we're gonna click in the rotation box and we'll start by typing 30. And 30 is kind of the magic number for this tutorial. So you can see uh, it rotates it 30 degrees. Not quite isometric just yet. Um, <laughs> and if we type in minus 30 in the horizontal skew, so the rotation and the horizontal skew are the two boxes that we're going to be using. You can see it becomes isometric. Uh, it's all angled correctly. We've got a 30 degree rotation minus 30 on the horizontal skew. And what we could do is if we wanted to swap that round the other way, for example, all we do is we change 30 to minus 30, and then we change minus 30 to 30. And then it makes it isometric, but pointing the other direction. Um, something else we can also do is we could set both of these to 30, and then it will stand up vertically. So it will still be isometric, but it'll be standing. And then of course we could set them both to minus 30 and then it will be standing up the other way. Now, if you're layering up a design like the one I showed at the beginning, doing this over and over and over again is, uh, well, it's not only really, really boring, but it's actually kind of not very time efficient. And we can set up something called an action in Photoshop and repeat all of this in just one click. So I'll show you how to do that now. So let's just undo this. So what I'm gonna do is go up to window, down to actions. And you can see I've got my panel docked over here and I've already had a go at doing this. So we'll just delete this folder here. And we'll go and create a new folder at the bottom. So you can store all of your actions in folders, keep them all organized if you want. And we'll call this isometric action tutorial. There we go. And inside this folder, we're just gonna create a new action and you can call this whatever you like. I usually just go with actions. I like to keep everything separate in different folders. And you can even assign function keys to this if you want. And uh, you could give it a color. Um, I've never really done that, but there you go. You could make it blue if you want. So we'll click record. Now you'll see this recording icon right here indicates that we are now in recording mode. Now this isn't like real time. It's not, it's not time based or anything, but it will track and record our steps that we do in Photoshop. So at the moment you can see nothing is listed. And what I'm gonna do is we'll select this layer over here. This happens to be layer one. And then we'll go to edit, free transform. And we'll do the 30 degree rotation. And then the horizontal skew, remember is minus 30. Then we can double click to set that transformation. And you can see now we have something listed. All of those steps, that information is now captured in this action. So we can go down here, we can go to stop, and there we go, we've created an action. So actually what we can do now is we could go edit, undo, it'll put this back, 
It won't undo the action that we've created, but we simply now just have to pick any layer. So I'll pick the one in the middle, click on the action here within the folder, and then click play. Boom, boom, boom. It's literally that easy. And you can add as many different actions as you like. You could have one that's isometric going this way. You could then do another separate action that goes the other way. You could do another one that makes it stand vertical like we did a bit earlier. And then you could actually keep all of these different actions. Uh, you could name them all separately and then keep them all within this isometric action folder. So we could have like uh, right isometric action. You could have left, you could have top. You, could, you get what I mean? You can like store everything, keep it all, all organized in a folder. So going back to the example at the beginning, I did have some floating UI elements. Now what you can do from XD is you could export like the buttons, some of the pop-up boxes, things like that, all separately as PNGs. You can see here, we've got some transparency on this one. And I'm just gonna go to select all. You can see the marching ants indicate that the entire canvas is selected. Go to edit, copy. Now sometimes with this, uh, copy doesn't always work. So if in doubt, just go copy merged. That will copy absolutely everything, including the transparency. So I always try one. If it doesn't work, I try the other. And then we go back over to our main document, edit and paste. And we can see that this is behind things. So we'll just drag this up to the top. And of course, give this a name. We'll go pop up. Bit big at the minute. So we'll go to edit, free transform. And I'll drop this down to, let's say, 40% on the width and height. There we go. Bit smaller. And what I can do now is I can run our newly created action. Click play, there we go. Now this doesn't really stand out because we've got a lot of uh, things that are the same color here, but if I do right click on this layer, and you could do this for all of them actually, we get the blending options pop up. And what we can do is check drop shadow. I'll just move this out of the way so you can see. It just helps lift it off some of the other UI elements, create a little bit of depth. And uh, these are the settings that I'm using for this drop shadow, if you'd like to follow along. You can, of course, do yours all on your own. That's absolutely fine. And then click OK. Now, I've created this drop shadow. I want to keep this consistent across all my U elements. U, U elements? All my UI elements. Uh, all I need to do is right click on this layer, go down to copy layer style. And what it will do is it will take all of those different blending options. And then I simply just select all of these other layers by holding shift and clicking, right click and select paste layer style. And it will paste that same drop shadow onto all of them. And we could stack these like this, for example, something like this. And we could even do this with the button. We could do it with icons. And you kind of, you kind of get the idea that you can really use this technique to start to build up like a, like a UI scene, really kind of bring it to life. And yeah, that was a look uh, into how I created that piece of art as well. And this is one of the main techniques that I used to do that. So there we go. That's how you can make anything isometric in Photoshop. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.